Hey y'all, I'm Tammy, and this is Collard Valley Cooks, where we cook like our mamas did. Today I'm making a lazy beef stew. Super simple, just throw everything in the Dutch oven, put a lid on it, put it in your oven for about two and a half hours, two and a half to three hours, and boy do you have a good stew that's going to warm you up. Okie doke y'all, I am prepping the veggies. This is a super easy lazy day stew you don't have to hardly do nothing but prep your vegetables and if you want to buy them already cut up you can do that too um, now i'm chopping up some onion to go in it you're going to need onion and it's a stew so i'm going to make the pieces pretty big you're going to need some chopped celery i got a couple of stalks of chopped you're going to chop, you're going to peel and chop your carrots. Now, if you want to buy them little ones that are already peeled and ready to cook, you can, because uh, this is a lazy day stew. And I'm just cutting them at a diagonal, just in pretty big pieces, because it's going to cook most of the, for two and a half hours it cooks. And then you're just going to chop your potatoes. Now, I'm using new potatoes, and that way the potatoes don't fall all to pieces, Okay. Uh, the good thing about a new potato is it keeps its shape when it's going to cook for a long period of time. Most of the time when you're making a roast, you have to add your vegetables in like at the last hour it cooks or something like that. But when you use new potatoes, you don't have to worry about doing that. I believe that new potatoes and red potatoes are the same thing. And if they're not, y'all tell me. These are red potatoes, but they got lots of starch in them and they're just like a new potatoes. I, maybe the new ones are just the little bitty ones. They get them, you know. All right, you're going to need, I am going to use a can of stewed tomatoes and a can of diced tomatoes, okay? We're going to be using one can of water as well. You're going to want two pounds of stew beef. I don't even know how much this weighs, but I'm thinking pretty close to it. I'm going to cut two of these pieces off of here and chop them. I'm gonna chop up this end part because it's not in a good shape. And then I might save this for a couple of steaks later. So you're just gonna cube it like stew beef. Now this is not a fatty cut. It looks like some fat is marbled through there, but what's actually marbled through there is tendon, okay? So this is not a uh, tender cut of meat, and that's why we're going to slow cook it. Now, you can tenderize it first. I did not. But you could throw some meat tenderizer in here. It's not going to hurt a thing. Um, if you want to tenderize it with soda, you can do that, baking soda, but if you do that, you're supposed to rinse it off before you cook it. So I'm cutting it in pretty big cubes because it is supposed to be stewed, but not too big because this is not going to be tender, as tender as some other cuts. I think that might be enough. I don't want to make enough stew for an army when it's just me and Chris. But, I mean, you want to make what the recipe said. You can always freeze it. Save it for a rainy day or a cold day like we're having right now. The reason I chose this recipe, y'all, is because it's super cold outside everywhere, even down here in Georgia. And so the great thing about this recipe is that you just fix it and forget it. You put it in the oven and let it do its thing, and that's all you do. So you just got to get your prepping done. Let me wash my hands, and we're going to grab what we're going to flavor this with, which I believe is just uh, soy sauce, a little salt and pepper. Now that soy will probably tenderize it a little bit. Now, one thing I am going to do is I'm going to melt about a half stick of butter in the bottom of my Dutch oven, and I'm going to let it melt in there. 
now you don't even have to do this part, but I'm using a cheap cut of meat. When you're using a cut of meat that don't have a lot of fat, add some fat to it. What's the best fat in the world? Butter. So I'm going to put a whole stick in here since I got that much meat. We're going to make this delicious. I'm getting this recipe out of my Harvey's Best Cookbook. It's an old cookbook by a grocery store. And I think it was dated in the 70s. And it's called Busy Day Oven Stew. And that's where I'm getting this from. They used three tablespoons of soy and four tablespoons of cornstarch and a can of water and salt and pepper. And that's all there is to it. So I'm going to get my meat in here. We've got our oven preheated to 350 degrees. We got enough beef just about to cover the bottom. I'm going to add enough to cover the bottom of my Dutch oven. So if y'all find some uh, cheaper cuts of meat that's on sale, you can use it for beef stew. Right now, meat's outrageous. If you go sometimes on a Tuesday, they'll have it marked down from the weekend, too. I think that'll be plenty. Now, that's just enough to cover it. I'm going to put some meat tenderizer on this. And I'm using their recipe. I think I might add a couple of things. Why not? Let's do it. It's their recipe, but we're going to add a little bit of love from Tammy, okay? A little bit of love from Tammy. I'm going to go ahead and turn this off because you don't want it to, to cook too much when it's tough like that. You don't want to hit it too hot, really. I'm going to turn it off. This is my meat tenderizer, which has salt in it. We'll go ahead and put our tomatoes in there. We've got stewed tomatoes. I decided to use some stewed tomatoes. They just called for diced tomatoes, but I didn't use Italian either. That matters. Just plain old stewed tomatoes um, and regular tomatoes. And let me spread these around a little bit before we throw our other stuff in here. Now, the good thing about a Dutch oven is it's real, that lid is really heavy, so it's not going to lose any moisture, and the vegetables don't have to be down inside there to cook. It cooks with steam. So here's our potatoes. Part of our carrots. Put in our onion. Carrots and celery. This is going to be really good, y'all. It's just to fix it and forget it. Now, if you don't have a Dutch oven, which I hope you do, if you didn't get a good Christmas present, maybe you should buy you a Dutch oven through our website. Um, I think I got large ones on there, and I've got this Martha Stewart one on there too. But anyway, so there's our veggies. I'm going to go ahead and salt them a little bit. Oh, that's pepper. Well, I can pepper them too. Salt. Okay, we got a can of water. We're going to add our soy to it. It's three tablespoons of soy. You know what? I think I'm going to add the cornstarch to it and whisk it, and then we'll put the soy in the pot. They are calling for four tablespoons of cornstarch, and that'll thicken it, help thicken it. It's really going to help thicken it, actually. Hmm. I guess I'll put four. It's their recipe, right? We're going to whisk it. We might want to throw just a little extra water in there since I'm putting this in with the water and it's not quite getting the full can of water. There's one, two, three. A lot of that cornstarch is in the bottom, so you really need to mix it good. 
Mix it really good, pour it in there, and then we'll add just a little extra water. That soy sauce is salty as well. Look at there, it's about covered, ain't it? All right, that's their recipe. I don't think I'm gonna add anything to it. I think I'll do it just like they said. It looks good to me. Then you put the lid on it, open up the oven, slide it in. We're gonna cook this two and a half hours at 350 degrees. And I'm hoping it's gonna fit in my little oven. I don't know for sure if it will. So I'll put it in this direction. Ooh, it fits. Fix it and forget it. We'll see you in two and a half hours and have a good bowl of Lazy Day Beef Stew. Okay, I hope you've had a lazy day today. We're gonna pull out our beef stew. It smells good and it's smoking. Okie dokie, y'all. We're gonna take a look at this. Wow, it looks good. Looks really good, y'all. You get me a ladle. And we're gonna put some in our bowls. And I'm hungry, real hungry. So I'm gonna see how it looks, stir it up. It looks good, don't it? It's nice and chunky and hearty for a cold day. Got plenty of broth in there. It looks really delicious. All right, I'm, I'm curious to taste the broth since it had the soy in there. So I'm just gonna get a little bit in my spoon. The only thing I added to this recipe was the stick of butter. That is absolutely delicious. I'm serious. I believe this is better than my other beef stew in my first cookbook. That's how good it is. The meat's soft. Oh my goodness, y'all. This is a super delicious beef stew. And boy, was it easy. Gosh, it is really good, Chris. No kidding. This is probably one of the best beef stews you'll ever make. And all you have to do is fix it and forget it. If you don't have a Dutch oven, just go ahead and throw it in the crock pot. But you better cook it for a while in the crock pot. Okay? So put it on high for about, I would say, five hours. Okay? In the crock pot. It is absolutely outstanding. I'm not kidding. Mmm. If I make another cookbook, this is going in it. It's that good. Y'all have a wonderful day. And we thank you so much for watching Collard Valley Cooks, where we cook like Mama did. Bye, y'all. Love ya. When time it's over now, Tammy, she just showed you how to cook it up like Mama used to do. So go on.